NFL regular season in the books. The wild card weekend approaches, Joe, and it's finally time to separate the contenders from the pretenders. I love, absolutely love that Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers are not in this discussion. Failed to make the playoffs because the Detroit Lions ruined their night and ruined their postseason plans. I loved it. There were a lot of people, Jim Nance included, like during the game last week, just slobbering over the Packers and Aaron Rodgers on air. And I'm sitting here going, you are such a prisoner of the moment, sir. If you just look at the teams that the Packers played down the stretch, trash one, trash two, trash three, and there was like one good win (laughs) snuck in there. Yeah. So, yes, I'm ecstatic that the Lions took care of Aaron Rodgers. I am not looking forward next week when Tom Brady loses to the Cowboys. I'm not looking forward to an offseason of where's Aaron Rodgers going to go? Where's Tom Brady going to go? At this point, I don't care about either one of those Hall of Fame quarterbacks. I don't. I'm much more interested in Josh Allen. I'm much more interested in Joe Burrow. I'm much more interested in Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I'm much more interested in who could possibly win the NFC and is it going to be Brock Purdy? Is it going to be the, the San Francisco 49ers with their replacement level rookie quarterback? Yeah. So about Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, I think that both those quarterbacks burned so much of the media goodwill that they had. Because remember, Aaron Rodgers was kind of like this thinking man's QB. What you come to find out. Over Eccentric the, philosopher. Sure. What you, come, what you come to find out this, this past offseason and how things played out this season uh, all credit in the world to Drew McGarry in the San Francisco Chronicle described him as a walking substack newsletter. And I, I could not think of a better descriptor of Aaron Rodgers. You think you're deep, but you're not that deep, dude. Regardless. So I don't think that people are necessarily necessarily going to engage on the Aaron Rodgers stuff. I don't think Tom Brady's season comes to a close on Monday night, though. Maybe I'm being caught in the prisoner of the moment here when it comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and it's not so much my thought about the Bucs being a good Super Bowl contending team. They're not. But you telling me that the defense still doesn't have a little something in the tank? It's not Super Bowl caliber, but they can't take advantage of Dak Prescott, who's thrown 15 interceptions in, what, 12 games this season, that this Dallas team, as good as they are defensively, is mistake-prone offensively that the Buccaneers can't make that a slog, and wouldn't it be something on a Monday night, Joe, where Tom Brady gets that like one little final glimmer of Tom Brady-ness with a two-minute drive, right? Perfect scenario for the Cowboys. They played poorly against Washington. Obviously, they, their focus was not on that game. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Prescott needs to clean up his turnovers. That's fine. But you want everybody bad-mouthing you going into the playoffs. That's what you want. Mm-hmm. And you want what, what you just said about Tom Brady – Terry Bradshaw is going to say, <laughs> all of the Sharp brothers are going to say, all of the Hasselbeck yeah. brothers are going to say, you, Dan Orlovsky is going to be out there telling you, you don't want to play Tom Brady. He, the old gunslinger's got one more bullet in him, blah, 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 Tampa Bay is good enough to beat bad or average teams. Yeah. That's who they are. As we saw with the Panthers the week before. So let's look. Let's look. And I want you to stop me when we get to Tampa's good win, okay? Okay. Because they went eight and nine this season. Congratulations to me. The only one of the only season totals I actually hit. Mm-hmm. Here are the wins. You ready? The Panthers? No. The Cardinals. No. The Saints. No. The Seahawks. It's a playoff team. It's a playoff team. It's my contender. Okay. The Rams. And no. The Falcons. No. The Saints. No. <laughs> the Cowboys. <laughs> there we go. They beat the Cowboys in week one. There we that go. That was basically the, the extent of their season. They beat the Cowboys and they beat Seattle both. Uh, well, the Cowboys game was in Dallas. This game was the Seattle game was at home. Yeah. Every game they played was six points, three points, overtime, one point. Like, the, the the Buccaneers don't have a good coach. Yes, they have a Hall of Fame quarterback. Mm-hmm. And he is the best to ever do it. He mm-hmm. is the most accomplished quarterback in the history of the league, no doubt. They're not winning that football game. I think they have one in them. Although, to your point, after what just happened with the Cowboys and the Washington football team, or whatever they're called right now, there's a separate conversation about Sam Howell's performance in that game. Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, did say this as it relates to how things are going to go the rest of the week. 
We get to suck on that all week. And uh, if that doesn't make you want to uh, get ready to go in about six, seven days, nothing else will. And that was as uh, uh, thorough a butt kicking as we've had this year. And uh, uh, we're going to find out if that'll get you ready or not. Yeah, and I'd much rather have a 26-6 loss where, where you played awful than get your intestines stomped out in overtime by a point on a kick, whatever. I, give me the give me this exact scenario every single time. Okay, can I hear that first part again? We get to suck on that all week. Yeah, Jerry's jaw is gonna be sore by the end of the week. All right, so um, I'm on board with the Buccaneers shocking the world, which might not be a shock to some people because you just laid out. I already had, I already entered Tom Brady cliche mode until he's officially done. I'm not going to count Tom Brady out. He's coming back next year. Where though? Um, obviously not Tampa, not Tampa, not New England. No, maybe the. They, I mean, they, Miami would make a lot of sense. The Raiders would make a lot of sense. Not San Francisco because they have got Brock Purdy. Who needs Tom Brady when you got Brock Purdy? If Frisco wins, I mean, it's the same scenario that we've talked about with quarterbacks this whole time. Yeah, right. Like if you win the thing with Brock Purdy, why would you invest? No. Particularly when you, I mean, I know uh, Trey Lance's deal is not that big. It's, I know a, you, it's a rookie deal, but. I know you speak really, really highly of Kyle Shanahan and what he's able to do offensively. And I think for the most part, what they're. At, Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers has entered into my favorite territory when we talk about quarterbacks. It's something that Steve Logan, former ECU head football coach, would talk to us about all the time on the, on the afternoon. Just be an operator, man. But you got two dynamic playmakers that can open things up. I think they don't have a like a like a league historic yards after catch statistic, but they're really really good at that. Because when you have Christian McCaffrey and when you got George Kittle, chances are you're going to get some big plays that break that break off. And they got a really good defense. So I do think that the Seahawks and the Seahawks are kind of like making the playoffs was a win in and of oh, itself. Huge. Yep. You had the Geno Smith like out of nowhere season that cooled off a little bit. But I think between Geno Smith being a heartwarming story, making the playoffs, and Russell Wilson having the year that he had in Denver, what more could you ask for in Seattle, right? So I don't expect them going on. Uh, the other game on Saturday night would be the Chargers and the Jaguars. That's another one of those situations where I think that Staley, the coach for the Chargers, is a classic overthinker, and it's a little analysis paralysis. And would it shock you if... Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars beat the very lemon booty Chargers in the playoffs. I was just going to tell you to pick the coach in that one. Doug Peterson yep. has done amazing work this year with the Jaguars, even after a 3-9 and nine start. So, 3-8 and eight start, excuse me. To Sunday's game, the Bills are going to continue on. The Dolphins are a shell of themselves. Uh, the the Dolphins that were a hell of a lot of fun with Tua tonga Vilo at the beginning of the season are non-existent, period. Uh, and I do feel like what we saw, the, the breakthrough game that Naheem Hines, Garner legend, NC State Pac Pro, uh, helped break out for the Bills, I think was the first in the stepping stone. That was an incredibly difficult game for the Bills, given what happened on Monday night and DeMar Hamlin. So to break through the way that they did, I believe that this is what they need. And I think that's the stepping stone. And the, and the Dolphins are the perfect team to see on Saturday, given where they are. Also an easy cliche to for follow. Sunday. I would love for the Bills to win the Super Bowl. I would love nothing more. But of course. Now, Naheem Hines is now part of football history. Amazing afternoon, taking the opening kickoff the way that he did, and then adding the second one, which really proved to be the difference in the game. So I would love nothing more than that for the Buffalo Bills and Naheem Hines. Unfortunately, we don't get to pick our own endings. No. It's not how the world works. No, no. The other two games on Sunday include the Giants and the Vikings. Uh, I still am at a loss as to how the Vikings ended the season at 13-4. and four. Um, with your favorite point differential stat. And then we got the Ravens and the Bengals. Uh, we don't know the status of Lamar Jackson. There's a there's a deeper conversation there with the quarterback and when exactly he's supposed to be coming back. Uh, John Harbaugh never indicated that he was done for the season, but it's been a few weeks since we've seen Lamar Jackson. And the Bengals are playing their best football at the right time. They're hot again. And they got that Joey Burr swag back. We've all seen it. We've all seen the pictures. So... It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if the Ravens lose and we get into a spiral of offseason speculation with Lamar Jackson and where he might actually land because he's a free agent at the end of this year.